Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Chasing 518. Today, we're gonna try to figure out where this little guy came from. Stay tuned. I found a tooth in the case and I don't have any missing teeth. This video has definitely changed direction. Got the axle shafts out, drive shaft disconnected, so now it's time to pull the carrier out. these sterlings just come out like super easy for some reason. I don't know if that's a good thing or what. But... Oh, that's good. I almost went in the drink. I've also been having a speedometer bounce issue for a while and it looks like uh, this is probably why that tooth's just about rolled off completely that one's a little messed up I don't know about any others uh, okay well now's where it gets interesting because I found a tooth in the case and I don't have any missing teeth that's a problem I planned on Pulling this out, thinking that I was going to do a new ring and pinion, but turns out this is a ring gear tooth from the last ring gear that was in this truck. Must have been hiding in like the pinion oil passage or something, so my mistake there, but uh, anyway, this one looks okay, but that tooth at some point bounced around in there, hammered the tone ring, and I've had a twitchy, glitchy, jumpy speedometer needle ever since, so... I'm going to just kind of weld these teeth up right here and then try and file them, grind them, and get the, get the profile right again. This video has Definitely changed direction. It was going to be a watch me install my first ring and pinion ever, and now it has turned into just salvage what I found. So the ring gear in the truck was fine. The tooth I found was from the old ring gear, and I think it was hiding in the uh, oiling pocket for the pinion bearings. So what happens is, as the ring gear spins around like this, the oil flings off of it, gets shot into that channel right there, lubricates the pinion bearings, and then comes out this hole over here. And I'm guessing it shot that tooth in there and it lived there until it just bounced out recently and got shoved back through and punched a hole in the diff cover right here. Uh, the pinion gear doesn't look great, but that's okay. It's been that way for a long time. The ring gear looks pretty good. So I patched up the tone ring Right there, that tooth, that tooth, and that tooth. Just kind of put some weld on them and profiled them back in. I think they'll be all right to pick up the vehicle speed sensor. I'm just gonna throw the diff back in the truck. It's a track lock. I don't know if it's tight or not. I wasn't even trying to do burnouts with it. Uh, so maybe that'll be the test when we get back together is see if we can make some tire smoke. Need to look up the torque for these carrier cap bolts and uh, these torque down. Get comfortable in here. Okay. 
The only real upgrade I'm actually getting to make today is I finally get to install my Rough Stuff diff cover. So this thing is super stout. I mean, what is that, quarter, three-eighths inch thick flange? Uh, super solid. So uh, if I ever hit any rocks, won't, um, won't smash it like the super thin sheet metal cover that, that comes with these. I guess conversely, if a ring gear ever wants out, it's not going to make it out either. But um, So let's uh, get some RTV on this and get it installed. With the clutch type posi that's that's in that diff carrier, you're supposed to use a limited slip gear roll additive, like a friction modifier. Uh, I've got this one left over from some Jeep project, and then I've got this generic one. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna add in yet. Maybe I'll read the labels, maybe I won't. filled with gear oil, got the plug back in it. I also realized halfway through that uh, better put the axle shafts in, otherwise the oil's gonna come out there too. So something about the Rough Stuff diff cover is the plug is about mid axle tube, which is a lot higher than the uh, factory fill plug, which is uh, probably near the, the bottom of the tube. The Sterling calls for like three and a half quarts of gear oil. I am really struggling today with GoPro. I keep popping SD cards in uh, that I know are empty and they need to be like reformatted so I keep running out of disk space. Uh, I had to charge my Volta battery handle so I was using the little batteries and they keep dying even though they're not quote dead. I hate this GoPro. It's killer for stabilization but it sucks for everything else. That's all back together full of oil. I put the axle shafts back in off camera so that uh, the gear oil wouldn't come out. I gotta tighten those bolts up and then throw the wheels and tires back on, connect the drive shaft, and I think we're ready to see how it does. Drive shaft's back on, axles are in, cover full of fluid. Let's get the wheels on this thing and uh, take it for a test drive. A good test drive right now will be trucks pretty much out of fuel. So I'm gonna run a couple miles to the gas station, put some fuel in it. We'll see if the speedo's bouncing. See if we're quiet, make sure we're leak free. Should probably clean the windshield too. So it looks like I'm still gonna have a little bit of a speedometer bounce, which I guess those tone rings are just real sensitive. The cruise control trying to follow that glitch was the most annoying part. So we'll see if the cruise control is smoother, but I've got a new tone ring coming from Yukon. And I think I'm gonna send the 410 ring and pinion back. And I'm just gonna start gearing up for, a, huh. I'm gonna start gearing up for 488 gears front and rear. Cause I wanna put 40s on this truck. And I feel like the, the 410s just with the 37, just kind of in that annoying spot where as soon as you put a trailer behind it, it's, it's just not quite happy and drives too fast, overdrives too, 
too much, so. Uh, let's do some more driving.